Well, so I have a hybrid practice. I'm um, visual artist. Uh, photo's probably my oldest and deepest love, but I also do a lot of installation and sculpture and design. And uh, my day job is running a cultural production shop inside an HIV prevention agency. So it's actually an AIDS services organization called AIDS Project Los Angeles. So I do publishing and uh, outdoor advertising and materials development projects. And then I teach one class uh, a term at Art Center in Pasadena. So I'm based in LA, but um, those kind of three economies, visual art, uh, the teaching and the HIV work, allow me to do a fair amount of traveling, which is great, because I get to meet lots of good people and, and see new places. So. Uh, what do you teach? What, what's the class you teach? I teach within the photography and imaging department at Art Center, and for the last several years, I've been teaching a class called Fine Art Photography. And um, a lot of our students, right when they start, they, they think they're oriented towards a commercial practice, which is great, but um, many of them haven't had access to or contact with what artists are doing with photography. So. I try to get them to go out to museums and, and have some sense of the last 30, 40 years of fine art photography so that can inform their practice. It's called AIDS Project Los Angeles and it's actually a giant AIDS service org. So it's one of the largest in the country and it's based in LA. And uh, I work in the education department and so um, I do a lot of different things. So we'll do local campaigns, billboard campaigns or bus sides of buses and we'll usually develop those in concert with the communities that are most impacted by the disease. So we'll often distribute, say, digital cameras to them and then do writing workshops. And from the t storytelling they do about their lives, we then work with them to craft messages that go back out to the broader community. I also, for years, uh, ran an art journal called Corpus, which we would produce in editions of 5,000 and distribute for free across the country. And we would invite artists and writers and designers again to be telling the story of HIV um, and then put the publications back out to school curriculum, to, to prisons, to clinics, to hormone centers, etc., so that lots of different kinds of stakeholders in this larger HIV economy are um, experiencing art and poetry and, and fiction as ways to rethink the disease. I have been working with, with communities and, and photography for, I don't know, a couple decades at least, and I, I never tire of looking at anyone's pictures, and, um, and I really love the moment when people are using cameras to tell their story and to sort of explore, analyze, shape, alter their reality. And um, so I've been doing that for a long time in education contexts and gang intervention contexts and, and in HIV for, I don't know, maybe 15 years. But at APLA, until very recently, we had a really robust and, and pretty amazing youth program that our team of, of youth organizers ran. And so as part of that, we just had embedded uh, anywhere from three to five digital cameras at a time and we would just give them out to different members of the group every every week and I forget what the archives up to now but maybe seven or eight thousand digital images and um, I think probably the the most enriching story to me is we had pulled from the archive to do this bus ad and the kids had come up they're, they're mostly queer youth and they had come up with this saying that um, were family by choice, not by blood, this way that community is formed. And they used an image that showed them with their kind of rockabilly, beautiful dyed hair, punked out in Los Angeles, and we put that on the side of the bus with this tagline. And one of the kids' moms was riding the bus. A lot of them come from families, and they, they use the bus as how they navigate the vastness of L.A. And she had seen her son and his friends on the bus, and so she came home all proud about, Mijo, I saw you on the bus with your friends. You guys look great. I'm so glad you're doing this. And, you know, for him, who had, he had just come out to his family fairly recently, for him to get that kind of love from his mom and for her to see her son reflected back to her and the rest of the riders on that bus was was a pretty amazing moment and so you know those aren't everyday occurrences but but there's moments like that we realize that it is I do believe that photography is world making so I mean I've known in focal for years and always admired the work they've done and collected them and shared them with my students and um, you know I'm, I guess I'm speaking specifically about Nueva Luz but obviously the programming and stuff that in focal's done and they recently had a contest people place this thing for their I think 35th anniversary and so I submitted work kind of on a lark and I say that because uh, I had made these pictures of me exhaling my breath into cold night air and then I was photographing them with a simple point-and-shoot camera on-camera flash very low-tech but I found them to be really kind of mysterious and beautiful this effect of photographing breath against the night sky and in LA there's only about two and a half nights a year when it's cold enough and humid enough to kind of have that moment so anyway I had this body of work I'd made last year and I thought you know this isn't really a thing breathing is a process but 
and I, I worried that they were going to be thinking more in a still life mindset. But I said, you know, let me not be presumptuous. And they had a, a great jury that they assembled for the contest. And so I was fortunate enough to have the work selected. And, uh, and then Miriam and Daniel were kind enough to feature it in the latest issue of uh, Nueva Luz. So I feel great. I was here signing copies yesterday and the uh, publication looks beautiful. You're on the cover. Yeah, I feel very fortunate, or at least my breath's on the cover. <laughs> I'm exhaling. 